What's up everybody, Matt Moran here for another car review. This is of course the 2020 Toyota Camry XSE all-wheel drive. Huge thanks to Toyota for flying us out here to Park City, Utah to play with these uh, all-wheel drive Toyotas in the snow. So about the all-wheel drive Camry, well, um, you can't tell that it's all-wheel drive aside from a badge on the back. So there is nothing that differentiates this. Uh, the body they say is five millimeters higher, but the ground clearance still is the same. So that's just because of the drive line that they swapped in. So this is basically the same all-wheel drive system you get in the lower versions of the RAV4. And so that's why this is only on the four cylinder, not on the six. So, I mean, the Camry still continues to look very well over the past few years, you know, they haven't made any changes, but I don't think they really needed to, you know, they they uh, made their choice of being one of the bolder entries in this segment as far as styling goes and I think the sales have been very good and so they clearly made the right choice there. And I still do like how the XSE version here has a little bit of a sportier approach. You can get a two-tone roof on it, uh, you know you have the quad exhaust in the back and just the sportier bumpers and stuff that really transforms the styling between the XSEs and the XLEs. Um, it really is a big difference and I appreciate that they went to those lengths um, to try and make the Camry look sportier. And uh, But yeah overall you know it still is the same great camera even has the same tires as a standard camry uh same wheels all that kind of stuff is all unchanged uh but like i said still a very good look all right so let's hit the road here in the camry so i'm gonna breeze over the interior here very briefly because it's the same as it has been the past couple of years if you want to hear my in-depth thoughts on the camry interior you can go watch that video i'll also be reviewing a camry trd relatively soon so i'll be covering the interior in more depth in that one uh, but don't have a, a ton of time here with this so just basically you know it's the same camry interior that uh is very familiar now with the funky design here for the center stack you know, a lot less traditional than all the other competitors in this segment um, but it all works very well I do like you now have standard Apple CarPlay and Android Auto which is something that they didn't have back in the 2018s that I reviewed so that's a nice addition and you know I think some of the materials and stuff it's a little bit behind some of the you know brand new Ultima and the brand new Legacy I think they kind of have a little more soft touch uh, in most places and stuff but still you know very durable and still a very good interior nonetheless and uh, but yeah so let's hit the road so i'm actually uh sitting here with uh, sophie on from redline reviews hey guys and uh so we're uh drive partners here today uh, out in beautiful park city utah and so i'm just gonna put into sport mode here and uh try out an acceleration here in the camera right off the bat and here we go so pretty responsive You know, it's average, uh, you know, commuter car performance. So this runs the two and a half liter uh, four cylinder engine, just direct injection, but uh, no turbo or anything, and runs it through a normal eight speed automatic, which is, you know, one of the last holdouts here as far as normal automatics and family sedans with everyone else going to CVTs for better fuel economy. And uh, so, you know, this is, uh, you know, average power. It does 205 horsepower, which is about 20 more than what you get with a base Legacy and Altima. So it is um, a little bit better. I don't know if that's going to translate to a faster zero to 60 time or anything um, but you know so you have a little bit more power it's 185 pound feet of torque and uh, you do have a little bit of extra weight to get up and move as well though so it's around I think they said about 160 pounds officially depending on the trim and stuff uh, so it's you know now you're around 35 to 3600 pounds depending on how it's equipped right yeah and unfortunately I don't think this car passes your giggle test no <laughs> I not. didn't see it there now we had asked Toyota why don't you guys do a six cylinder and they said only 6% of buyers take the 6 cylinder. Yeah, 6%. Which seems guys, really low. Really there's low. so many of you commenters that say, I only want a Camry V6 and that's it. And uh, there's very few of you that actually go out and buy them, unfortunately. So mm. if you do want a V6 Camry with all wheel drive, then you need to go buy a normal front wheel drive Camry V6, get that take rate up on the V6, and then maybe they'll consider doing an all wheel drive version. But it just doesn't make any sense. You know, they're saying, what, they said 15% to 30% of people may go for the They said drive. 15 to 20 is what they're thinking, um, which, I mean, if you live out here with the snow, I wouldn't be surprised if more people bought this car with all-wheel drive, but the four-cylinder's fine. It's yeah. perfectly adequate, but for enthusiasts, we're like, okay, it needs, a more, it needs another 100 horsepower. Yeah, but if you are ever wondering <laughs> if you're in the minority or not, 94% are perfectly happy with this four-cylinder. Mm -hmm. So, um, and so for those 94% of you that 
this is going to be plenty. It's enough to get back and forth to work, and you have the added uh, security of the all-wheel drive. It's going to be fine. And, you know, I don't think it's slow feeling, honestly. I think it's adequate, just not exciting. I think anything. we're just used to driving faster cars. Right. <laughs> and, you know, it's always nice having options. I love when manufacturers provide options. That's one thing I do appreciate about the Legacy is they give you the option for that, uh, you know, turbo motor if you want it. I guess from an economic standpoint, it doesn't make sense. If no one's going to buy them, then there's no point in spending all the R&D money on it. Right. But now, do you think you like this more than the Altima all-wheel drive that you just reviewed? Um, I think so. I mean, I have to drive a little bit more here, see how it handles corners and stuff, because I was actually pleasantly surprised with the Altima's handling. I think it actually handled better than the Legacy, in my opinion. Really? Okay. Yeah. But the camera's always been very good, too. They're, you know, very flat and sporty with their handling and so I'm expecting this to be you know the same also speaking of handling you have 235 wide all season tires here on the XSE if you go for the lower trims you can go all the way down to a 215 <coughs> wide tire but here you know with this you get the 235 so you do have a pretty good you know grip setup I think that's you know definitely a nice improvement legacy you still only get I think it's two either 215s or 225 I think it was 225s last yeah. month and Ultima I think is 235s as well so but Give it the beans, Matt. Yeah, I'm gone. <laughs> to the floor. Yeah, you know, and it's fine. I think being in this high altitude yeah. does not help things. The engine definitely feels like it's kind of gasping for air the way we are trying, yeah. trying to walk up upstairs because we're not used to the altitude. I know, yeah, we were talking earlier. We're both like short of breath here driving or Even walking trying to around. film this, these videos, we're like, uh, I need to take a breath for a second. I know. I thought we were in shape. What's going on? You know? <laughs> But yeah, so I mean, other things though to note here, it's very refined still, you know, the Camry's always been, obviously again, they sell hundreds of thousands of these, so their goal is to make a comfortable commuter, and they've certainly retained that here, you know, it still drives exactly like any other Camry. Um, the body's five millimeters higher, I don't think you'll ever be able to feel that unless maybe you're on an autocross course or something. I don't know, but... And they also said they made it 5 millimeters higher to clear the all-wheel drive system. So it's the same ground clearance as the old one, which we witnessed firsthand by <laughs> high centering in there. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> uh, we went off into the snow and uh, we needed a, a tow out. That's, uh, so keep in mind, you know, you still... You have the all-wheel drive, but it does not make you invincible by any means. Um, and, you know, obviously snow tires are going to be the way to go if you really want to have something that's going to go in the snow very well. And, of course, having extra ground clearance with something like a RAV4 also makes a lot of sense if you drive in deep snow. But for those who are just on slick roads every once in a while, you know, this is going to be nice to have. Helps you get up hills, things like that. Um, but, again, don't think you're invincible just because you see an all-wheel drive badge on the back. Another thing, though, to note about the Camry all-wheel drive here, though, is you are going to take a little bit of a penalty as far as your fuel economy goes. So, um, the fuel economy has dropped about five, four to five MPG, depending on the trim and all that kind of stuff. But, so, we're looking at uh, 25 in the city here, 34 on the highway, and then, get, depending on the trim, you either get, I believe, 28 or 29 combined. And so, um, you know, that's a good bit lower than we do with a normal Camry. And so, part of that is because of this all-wheel drive system, um, while it can disconnect the roof wheels and be front-wheel drive only and only have the rear-wheel drive uh, component whenever it's needed, uh, you still have it constantly spinning the drive shaft. So it's not the same system that they use in like the torque vectoring versions of the RAV4 and Highlander where that actually disconnects the whole drive shaft. This still spins the drive shaft. So that's why you get some, some drivetrain loss there and that brings down the fuel economy a little bit. Maybe it'd be cool someday if they have the torque vectoring all-wheel drive system in this, but this one is just a normal 50-50 split. Uh, that's as, the most it can put to the rear is 50% there and um, it only just does an equal amount of power between the two wheels. Other little driver input things to mention though, you know, you have a pretty quick throttle response here, and the A-speed automatic is pretty quick to respond. I'm still in sport mode, so that's part of why I think it's, it's a little eager to respond there, but um, it does a good job. Again, everything is, is fine. You know, there's nothing that's gonna feel overly sporty, and there's nothing that's gonna disappoint you either. It's very, um, just what you expect, and uh, so it's, it's pretty good in that regard. Now, um, in the uh, sport mode here for the transmission, you can go and use the paddle shifters here. And it is very responsive. It is just as responsive as all its competitors, I think. And it's, it's almost immediate in basically every shift, so. It was unexpected that they actually worked that well. Yeah, yeah, I was really impressed. <laughs> they do a good job, and I mean, especially because I think the A-Speed Auto and the RAV4 seem to have a mind of its own a little bit. Yeah. Whenever we drove that, you know, about a year and a half ago, and this, it's actually holding gears and very obedient, so. 
it does a good job. Brakes are also very responsive, typical Toyota brake pedal where you have, basically it starts gripping right at the top of the pedal there and gives you very confidence inspiring brakes. Steering is also uh, pretty good, you know, it's a little bit on the lighter side, um, but I think it is a little heavier than Legacy and maybe even a little heavier than Altima. Both of those have tuned their steering to be really light. And this, I think, is a little bit sportier. It also helps we're in the XSE trim, so that you know, gives you um, a little bit of a sportier setup as far as suspension and stuff. No complaints, just solid, reliable transportation that now can get you uh, in some mild snow conditions safely to your destination. So. Yeah, it's a good combo. I mean, Toyota said that tons of people were requesting this, and um, you know, once they announced this, they said they just got flooded with emails and excited uh, owners that were looking forward to getting these. And so, I think this is going to be a massive hit for them, and uh, you know, they could even exceed their expectations for how many they think they're going to sell. Because I think you know, half the country could use this all-wheel drive system, you know, because you have, aside from the sunshine states, someone's going to be getting rain or snow or some kind of cold temperatures where that all-wheel drive makes sense, you know. The very reasonable upcharge for the all-wheel drive option here on the Camry and the Avalon is also going to probably mean that a lot of people will choose it. So Toyota did not have final pricing for us at the time of filming this video, but they said it was going to be around $1,500 extra for the all-wheel drive option. That's a very minimal upcharge uh, for an all-wheel drive setup, and uh, I think that will lead a lot of people to choose this so that they can have that extra peace of mind in the winter if they ever do encounter rain or snow. Speaking of snow, though, while we were here in Utah, they also had a snow driving course set up for us where we actually were able to slide around the Camry and the Avalon on the snow and uh, I'm happy to report that it is very uh, confident and reassuring in its handling. So if you really try you can hang out the back end a little bit but again it only is a 50-50 split so it's not going to be very rear biased or anything but it was a very controllable very neutral handling vehicle even while sliding on snow. So I think um, again for people who just want the safety and security of all-wheel drive this is going to be exactly what you're looking for and will give you um, that extra confidence even if you are driving on actual snow um, you should be very uh, you know confident in your handling capabilities even with the all-season tires that this had of course if you had actual snow tires uh, then you would have even more confidence ladies and gentlemen your all-wheel drive camera is here yeah that's basically the end story of this that's it yeah that's <laughs> And I, you know, I'm glad too, because I think, you know, there's so many people that are just jumping to SUVs and a lot of them are just jumping to that because they want all-wheel drive. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot of people that said they really liked their sedans, but they just wanted that all-wheel drive capability. And so I'm glad that, you know, someone other than Subaru is finally stepping up and giving this, you know, Nissan has seen the light as well. And, you know, SUVs are still, you know, fine and people really like them for their higher seating position and stuff like that. But I think if you don't need, you know, all that extra space and bulk and stuff, I think a lot of people yeah. really love sedans. Yeah, because this still handles better than an SUV. Like, you still feel nice and low to the ground. Like, Definitely. it feels a lot sportier than any other Camry. And uh, it's a good thing that Toyota added. I mean, I kind of wish that they would have considered adding a V6 with all-wheel drive to the Avalon, at least. Yeah. Um, which we haven't driven the Avalon just yet. Well, I'll, I'll try to swap into that later. But yeah. this four-cylinder is fine for for like 90% of buyers. Right. You know, maybe someday if, uh, you know, this is wildly popular with the all-wheel drive, they'll add it to the V6 just for kicks. Because they have the same bones in the Highlander, you know, they yeah. could just, you know, potentially drop that in. I'm sure it's co more complicated than that, but they could probably do it, you know. I think they're also worried of stepping on Lexus toes, like by True. doing it, because the ES doesn't even offer all-wheel drive, and that's True. a car that should offer all-wheel well, maybe maybe <laughs> this is just the start and that'll happen next, who knows. But yeah, so that's about it, guys, for the uh, all-wheel drive Camry here. Uh, nothing to complain about, and if you have always wanted an all-wheel drive Camry, here you go. First time in about 30 years you've had that choice, and so great that they're offering this. Anyway, huge thanks to Toyota for uh, bringing us out here to review the Camry all-wheel drive. Thanks to Sofian here for riding along. Check out his channel if you haven't already. Uh, he does excellent reviews as well. And you even get more opportunities than I do. You get some of the more European stuff and all that. Yeah, so if you're into yeah. European stuff, he does way more of that, so definitely check out that for sure. Um, but yeah, so thank you guys very much for watching. Let me know your thoughts on the Camry all-wheel drive in the comments below. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care.